Okay, we're recording this video on Saturday, the 1st of April 2017. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good weekend. Hope you had a good week's trading. I had a pretty good week's trading. Um, volatility was great most of the week, except Friday. Friday was crappy, as was the Friday previously. Um, this Friday, I think the crappiness was driven by just end of quarter stuff. We had almost no volatility at the beginning of the day, and then almost like random type volatility at the end of the day. But anyway, uh, apart from that, it was a good week because the uh, ranges were up, which is always good for day trading. This video, I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk particularly about the currencies because I think we're in for something big next week on the currencies. So I'll just show you what I'm seeing on my charts. Uh, also, want to talk about briefly equities versus bonds and where I think we are there. Uh, but before getting on to the charts, two housekeeping notes. The first one is thank you for everybody's feedback on the new mic that I'm using. I know it's not great. It's not as good as the old mic. Uh, I think the problems will be fixed somewhat when I get one of these wind socks, uh, little kind of um, things that you put on, on top of your mic in order to uh, dull some of the wind kind of sounds that come out of my mouth when I'm talking the video. Uh, so thank you for everybody's comments on that. Second thing to note is for all the subscribers to the multiple time frame, the new version of the indicators, finally we have a new uh, installer to download. Log into your account page, download the new installer, shut down your TradeStation or NinjaTrader and run the installer and that'll give you the latest version of the indicators. Not much has changed on them. It was like we fixed a couple of little kind of problems. The main uh, change has been adding this confirmed trend uh, line to the system view of the world. It's just a handy dandy little kind of line. As soon as we get a low risk entry point that is then confirmed in two time frames, this switches on to a confirmed trend line. That's all that does. Very kind of simple here. So for example, we've got a low risk entry point that's been triggered and then we have another break in that time frame uh, or in another time frame, either the lower or the intermediate time frame and bang, all of a sudden it switches on the confirmed uh, trend. Uh, so it'll take here, we have a low risk entry point to go short, but it never gets confirmed. And so the confirmed trend line just keeps us in an uptrend. So that's all that does. It's a little kind of addition to the code that I always find useful in my trading. So we released it to the uh, kind of public version, the MTF version of the indicators. All right, let's talk about, first of all, just quickly on the equities versus bonds. So uh, a few weeks ago, talked about we were due for a rebalancing because the equities had got overbought and the bonds had got oversold. And that's what we've had over the last month or so. We've had a rebalancing that formed support uh, in the higher time frames on the equity side uh, at the beginning of this week. And we've had a nice little equity bounce from there. Are we going towards a crash or something kind of horrific? I don't think so. I think we will have a correction. Uh, we're, we're always due for corrections just because the market kind of, that's the way the market rolls. But I think the uh, the kind of scary downtrend move or sell-off move that we might see will end up being the fuel that propels us to even higher highs. I'm in the same ki uh, camp as Martin Armstrong and the view on the equity side is the problems are not particularly on the equity side. I think the problems are in the bond market. The bond market is where all the money has flowed in the last, you know, 10 years or whatever after the uh, 07, 08 debacle. The money's all flowed there. They bought stuff down at zero and negative interest rates and they're in a hell of a mess. So um, I think that's where the problems will end up kind of um, metastasizing. Metastasizing, there we go. Got that word out. Um, uh, the equities market will potentially be a beneficiary of that, but we have to go from extremes of emotion. We have to go and have a sell-off where everybody's kind of scared out of positions and so that we can have the rise to even higher highs uh, through people just being wrong-footed and, and kind of scared out of the market. So um, uh, I think one of those kind of down moves are in is in our horizon over the next during the next quarter, potentially. Uh, and this is why I'm kind of saying that. MTF view, system view of the equities market, this is the daily chart of E-mini. You know, just see this, we've been in a, an uptrend uh, from this kind of big sell-off that we had, broke into our uptrend, fraction, a little bit of weakness here, kind of mid last year. And then uh, even this is Donald Trump kind of uh, being elected in the volatility we had on that kind of uh, day. 
uh, has led to this kind of projection kind of going forward. So we're still in an uptrend. This week, all we did on the daily chart was come in and find that support, which is a pullback and an up uh, uptrend uh, on the lowest time frame. On this highest time frame chart, we've still got to put in the end of trend on that lowest time frame. We then have got to go to put in pullback end of trend on the intermediate time frame because we're above that uh, resistance level. And we've probably got to do the same thing on uh, this highest uh, time frame as well because we're well above that resistance level. So we've got to go find those levels uh, before things kind of turn around nastily and kind of uh, you know go, go the other way. So I'm still kind of bullish in this kind of intermediate kind of time frame. You can back it down and, and see what's happening on the lower time frames. Daily chart only uh, data, 135 minute bars. There's a, exactly three 135 minute bars in a daily chart. You can see here, this is where we kind of found a left shoulder with exhaustion by bearish divergence and a pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. We're now putting in pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. Where that ends up, that could be an interesting level from which we have a little bit of a sell off. But again, we're going to be caught by pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame. So uh, that's what we got to do, you know, break above this resistance and go see those levels you know, in the next week or two there on the 135 minute chart. And then backing it down again to the 45 minute chart. I think there are nine, exactly nine uh, 45 minute bars in a daily chart here. And this left shoulder was nicely formed. This is where I was putting out videos saying, um, you know, we, we need a, a rebalancing between equities and bonds. And then uh, as soon as I put the video out, because I'd seen this pan, we had this false breakout, an island type breakout where we kind of gapped it up to the new highs. And that was temporarily, those are the highs that we put in at that point. And from there, we had weakness in equities and we had strength in bonds uh, kind of coming together. But this needed to play itself out with a pullback to end of trend on the uh, lowest time frame and then on the intermediate time frame after this on a left shoulder, those momentum patterns on a left shoulder. And that's where we had this weakness here. But now, uh, you know, this is our pullback, uh, which is the pullback support level on the daily chart that's formed. And we're breaking above resistance on the uh, lowest time frame. We've got to break above resistance on the highest time frame. I know the close on uh, uh, the last bar of this on Friday looked pretty scary. Let's see what we do kind of Monday into Tuesday. But, you know, this has to play itself out with a pullback to end of trend on uh, this time frame, the 45 minute chart and so on. So still kind of bullish on equities that they'll kind of continue up. With the equities uh, picture, uh, I find the bond market particularly helpful to see major areas of where, where we are overbought and, and oversold. Dollar index, by contrast, I can't find anything that's useful in terms of being a forecast of what the equities market is going to do. But when you look at the bond market, long, long term, big, big picture, uh, you know, going back as many years as you can add data to a chart, basically, back to the 60s. What you do see is the bond market will strengthen for a couple of months prior to major uh, you know, sell-offs, crashes, whatever, uh, corrections and crashes in the equities market. And what we've had in the bond market is just finding the support level. So I think we are going to run into bonds f uh, for a while now. And that potentially is what puts us in trouble with the equities market in you know, a month and a half's time. So on the um, bond side, here's the daily chart of at US, which is the 30-year bonds. And this is where we had our kind of real spike up with pullback to end of trend on a lower time frame. And then on the intermediate time frame here, the uh, momentum, uh, exhaustion buy and bearish divergence comes in, bang. That's it. And then from there, we've had this weakness. Now on the downside, what we found ourselves in is supports kind of being formed. So the highest time frame, there's our support sitting there. That's this guy. And then we've had pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame and now run out pullback end of trend on the intermediate time frame. And we've started to break 
uh, into an uptrend. So a breaking back above you know, 152 or coming back and finding a lower risk entry point or something like that, that's got the makings of some rally material in 30-year bonds. So uh, you know we go from these exhaustion patterns into weakness, and then we go run away into exhaustion and weakness, and we've got the beginnings of this kind of breakout into the bond market. Now, so if we get that for you know let's say four, six, eight weeks, whatever it is, uh, and the equities market is still kind of running hot. That is potent, but you know the volumes are declining, and you've got bearish divergences kind of setting up all that kind of stuff. That is the makings of some kind of correction or whatever in the equities market. Um, so what are we sitting at? April, you know, September is usually a bad time of year for the equities markets, but the timing of this is well before you know kind of September. I would say it's you know in that six to eight to ten whatever week kind of uh, time frame. So. That's what, at least what I'm looking at at my charts, expecting continued rally in the bond market and continued rally in the equities market. But, you know, stealthily people will be getting out of the ec uh, the equities market, uh, getting ready for that kind of sell-off because the, the smarter money is kind of, um, you know, positioning in, in bonds. So let's see. That's at least what I'm kind of thinking uh, on this weekend. Uh, really wanted to talk about the uh, forex markets because I think next week uh, activity is really going to be interesting. And the reason for that is because we're sitting underneath resistances on daily time frames and breaking above that would signal trend breaks to the upside in these currencies uh, and not in the US dollar. So these are the, um, I should come up with a decent name for the, the big six or whatever, the six that I look at on my charts. So obviously you've got the dollar index, but you've got everything against that. The dollar index, the biggest components of the euro and the Japanese yen. And then you have the British pound, so these are the European currencies. And then the Aussie dollar and the Canadian dollar, and these are the resource uh, economies and currencies. You've got other ones, you've got the, you know, the Mexican pesos, you've got the New Zealand dollar, uh, but you've also got some fixed currencies, you know, the uh, Chinese yuan, uh, Hong Kong dollar, you know, the um, uh, Saudi real, uh, you've got Swiss franc and so on. But all those other currencies are kind of fixed in some way and are not kind of true uh, trading currencies. These five versus dollar index, these are the big ones and they're the ones that kind of trade freely against the dollar index. And when you look at this chart where they're all kind of set up side by side, you've got resistance resistance, 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 and resistance, and a break above resistance on those time frames. Some are obviously closer than others to those resistance lines, but a break above those resistances uh, will, will set off uh, potentially a little bit of a, a trend run uh, to the upside and a downward move in the dollar index. The one that really showed up this week was uh, British Pound, and with Brexit announcement, Article 50, uh, the Brits are they're serious. Of course, they've been serious ever since Brexit vote came out. They're serious, you know. And, and funnily enough, this week is the Europe when the Europeans said, "Oh shit, they are actually serious about leaving us." It's like, yeah, dummy. Anyway, but that was the bar. That was the Brexit bar. And so you got a blue professional bar uh, breaking uh, up here. And this one on the retrace held. So we found resistance. We came back, blue professional bar, at that kind of breakout level. It held. We continued to uh, close above the high of that blue professional bar. And we're within inches of that resistance. And as soon as we break above that resistance, bang, that, that signals us into a proper uh, kind of uptrend. The first one, I started talking about this when we uh, tested into 120 at this bar here. That was really important. So this is with sell-off, with exhaustion sell. Then we have this, which is a short covering rally. All of a sudden, all the people that said, well, hell, the pound has got to go down because we're doing Brexit. It's like, no. You know, uh, the smartest uh, guys in the room are saying that was the sell-off. You know, that's Brexit. We got short here and we covered here at 120. Uh, and then we've just been testing 120. And now, poor old amateurs, wrong-footed again with a Rambo pattern. And now they're kind of getting ready for a U-turn break above uh, this resistance will be the first sign uh, that we've kind of um, broken above resistance and got this thing into an uptrend. So these things take a while. I mean, I don't know when I put out that um, kind of uh, consider long, long pound uh, kind of options. It was after this, I believe. So these things just take a while to months to uh, kind of play out. But that's going to be important. And you can start to see that pattern on each of these uh, different um, uh, currency pairs 
cryptocurrency markets because uh, we're sitting under resistance on all of these. So um, let me just take you through uh, the charts. This is uh, the pound chart here. Exhaustion cells, bullish divergence, flush patterns kind of come in. That really important series of blue professional bars kind of down there at that low. And then, yep, it's still showing weakness here, but we're about to bust up above that, I believe, this week. So that's going to be absolutely key uh, this week. You know, 126 basically is the level. Uh, 126 and a half is the uh, resistance level. So look for that. Uh, on the euro, uh, same thing. So, you know, even even though the, uh, the pound and the euro are moving against each other, the relative uh, weakness there, but the, the euro still has, you know, uh, uh, some strength in it as well against the USD. So we've got exhaustion, sell bullish divergence comes in. We put in nice pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, an early signal. Pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. We've had our first sign of strength. We're coming back. We're going to form a lower risk entry point or potentially break back above here. So above the eights into the tens and whatever. And that will be a classic five step, step uh, setup for uh, the euro breaking up. Uh, Japanese yen, after having uh, this, you know, the monster move that we had uh, after pullback end of trend, we fell into a downtrend here. Now what we've been doing, whoops, is exhaustion, sell, bullish divergence, pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. Uh, it looks like we may or may not make a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. We've got some strength kind of going on. So above this kind of 90 level, 91 uh, would signal us breaking into a, a proper trending move on Japanese yen. Aussie dollar, my good friend, uh, you know, this has been such a, a crazy ride with the Aussie dollar. I'm long Aussie dollar. Exhaustion sell didn't come until we had this pattern. That was a short covering rally here. And then we've just been basing between, you know, 70 and 77 uh, for a good long while here for, was that a year? Jesus. Anyway, a year and a half. Um, and now, <clears throat> finally, pull back into trend on the highest time frame. This kind of exhaustion buy potentially getting the move going. And yeah, it's showing weakness at the moment. But, you know, if we bust up above 77, 77 and a quarter, all of a sudden we're breaking two resistance levels on the lowest and intermediate time frame. And all of a sudden that Aussie dollar starts to look really interesting there. We've got an RBA announcement. Uh, I think it's Tuesday. Uh, Aussie time um, this week. Uh, let's see what they kind of decide to do on rates. No one's expecting anything, uh, but it could be a statement out of the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia that could kind of start to signal that uh, trend out, trending break, uptrend break for Aussie dollar. Canadian dollar, um, not dissimilar to uh, Aussie dollar. I mean, we had this huge spike down move and then pull back to end of trend on the highest time frame. And again, we've been basing, basing here. Here we've got two supports in at the moment and resistance just gone off on the lowest time frame. Uh, it's just sitting that signal kind of um, behind there. So, you know, we didn't break supports here. Both of those kind of held, again, a break above that resistance level on the Canadian dollar would signal that into an uptrend. Um, so all of those are, uh, you know, potentially due uh, this week. So I think there's going to be um, some, some fireworks happening in, the, uh, in those currencies. Not maybe Monday, but you know it might be kind of Wednesday into Friday. Um, and the counter trend is dollar index. You know, dollar index went for this exhaustion by bearish divergence kind of come in. We had pullback to end of trend uh, on the lowest time frame, early signal there. Then we put in a little pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. So this is the makings of a five-step setup. Uh, we had the first sign of weakness here with a break, and we're kind of coming back. So if we put in a resistance level and we can't get through it, we roll over and go the other way, breaking down through 90, 99s uh, would signal a downtrend in the US dollar um, and kind of problems going on there. And the, the things that you know, we talk about when we have weakness in the US dollar is kind of debt problems, debt ceiling problems in the US. So there we go, a quick uh, uh, wrap around on the um, equities markets, the bond markets, and the currency markets. But this week, the currency markets are going to be interesting. Uh, and I'm seeing kind of continued strength in the equities market, but all these things never move in straight lines. They're always up and down and up and down. But uh, broadly speaking, I think that's uh, what I'm seeing, at least on my charts. So. Hope you're enjoying your weekend and yeah, looking forward to uh, Monday's trade and next week's trade.